Before addressing this often delicate and private topic, I want to share some exciting news. After much prayer, reflection, and thoughtful consideration, I'm thrilled to introduce a new series to our channel titled The Bible and Sex. This series was inspired by the many questions I've received from viewers like you, who are seeking clarity on sex and intimacy in a Christian context. One of the most common inquiries I've received comes from a 28-year-old Christian woman named Sarah, who has been married for several years and has a child. Sarah shared that her sexual relationship with her husband was adventurous early on in their marriage. However, after giving birth, her husband stopped engaging in certain sexual activities they once enjoyed, such as oral sex. Sarah misses the intimate connection they once had and wonders if it's wrong to desire these things from her husband. She asked, Is it sinful to want my husband to perform oral sex on me? Her husband, who has grown more devout, now believes that certain sexual acts might displease God. Sarah's question isn't unique. Many Christians wrestle with similar concerns regarding intimacy, wondering if their desires align with their faith. Another viewer asked, how can I convince my partner to have oral sex with me, knowing we are both devout Christians? This raises important questions about intimacy, consent, and mutual respect in marriage, all within the framework of Christian values. As Christians, we often face complex and deeply personal questions, especially when it comes to topics like sex, which are not always explicitly addressed in the Bible. The Bible can sometimes seem silent on specific modern practices, leaving us uncertain about how to navigate these issues in our relationships. This new series, The Bible and Sex, will be an ongoing project where we explore various aspects of Christian relationships, sexual expectations, and the role of faith in intimacy. Throughout the series, I aim to provide a thoughtful, biblically grounded exploration of questions like Sarah's and offer clarity and support to those facing similar challenges in their Christian journey. If this topic resonates with you or you know someone who may benefit from this series, I encourage you to stay connected. By subscribing, turning on notifications, and supporting this series through likes, comments, and shares, we can reach others who might be wrestling with the same questions about faith and intimacy. With that said, let's dive into today's question. What does the Bible say about oral sex? Is oral sex mentioned or addressed in the Bible, and is it permissible for Christians to engage in it within the context of marriage? Is oral sex mentioned in the Bible? The Bible does not explicitly mention or describe oral sex. While the scriptures remain silent on this specific act, some commentators, counselors, and pastors suggest that certain passages in the Song of Solomon might imply it. The Song of Solomon is a love story that celebrates the romantic and sexual union between Solomon and his bride. It is often filled with highly metaphorical language that illustrates the beauty and joys of marital intimacy. The imagery in the Song of Solomon has been interpreted in various ways with some suggesting that it might allude to different forms of physical affection, including oral sex. However, it's crucial to approach the text with caution. The Song of Solomon is rich in metaphors, many of which are symbolic rather than literal. For example, John MacArthur notes that while some imagery in the book may seem to suggest physical acts, the purpose of the metaphors is to evoke the beauty of desire and love within the context of marriage. These metaphors are deliberately vague and poetic, making it difficult to draw explicit conclusions about what specific sexual acts are being described. The verses often cited as potentially implying oral sex include Song of Solomon 2, 3 to 4, 4, and 7, 6 to 8. However, interpreting these passages requires careful consideration, as they may suggest acts of physical intimacy in a veiled manner. Respecting the privacy and intimacy of the marital relationship between Solomon and his bride. It's important to remember that while the Song of Solomon celebrates marital intimacy, it does not prescribe specific sexual acts. The emphasis is on the beauty and mutual pleasure of a committed, loving relationship. Pastors like Mark Driscoll have been criticized for pushing interpretations that overly emphasize or prescribe certain acts, such as oral sex from this text. 
Instead, the focus should be on the principles of love, respect, and mutual consent within marriage. Is oral sex permissible in Christian marriage? In one of my previous videos, I explored a method of navigating complex topics not explicitly addressed in the Bible by asking key questions that help us discern what is morally and spiritually wise. These questions can serve as a guide for Christian couples seeking clarity about sexual practices like oral sex. By using these questions as a framework, we can determine whether a specific act is sinful, unwise, or permissible within the context of marriage. Let's revisit these questions and apply them to the topic of oral sex in marriage. 1. Is it required or prohibited in the Bible? The Bible, as the foundational text for Christian faith and morals, does not explicitly mention oral sex. There are no direct commands that prohibit or require it within marriage, since there is no explicit biblical guidance on this act. Christian couples must use wisdom and biblical principles to discern whether it aligns with their values. 2. Does it honor God? One key question for any sexual act in marriage is whether it honors God. The Bible encourages sexual intimacy in marriage to be a reflection of love, respect, and mutual service. 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5 If both partners are comfortable with oral sex, and it is done in a way that fosters love, intimacy, and mutual respect, it can be seen as an act that honors the covenant of marriage. However, if one partner feels uncomfortable or coerced, it may not honor the principles of mutual love and respect. 3. Does it align with biblical principles of purity and holiness? While marital intimacy is encouraged in the Bible, it's also important that sex remains within the boundaries of purity and holiness. Hebrews 13.4 teaches that marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. Couples should ensure that their sexual practices, including oral sex, align with these biblical values. 4. Is it mutually agreed upon? Consent is a key component of Christian love and marriage. 1 Corinthians 7. 3 to 5 emphasizes that husbands and wives should not withhold themselves from each other, but should also not demand anything that their spouse is uncomfortable with. Mutual agreement and understanding are essential when deciding whether to engage in any sexual activity, including oral sex. 5. Does it promote emotional and spiritual intimacy? Sexual intimacy in marriage should strengthen emotional and spiritual bonds. If oral sex or any other sexual practice fosters deeper connection and love between spouses, it can be seen as beneficial. However, if it creates division or discomfort, it may not be conducive to the health of the marriage. 6. Does it edify the relationship? Finally, the Bible teaches that all things should be done to build up and edify one another, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Any sexual activity that strengthens the marriage and brings joy and fulfillment to both partners can be considered edifying. On the other hand, if it leads to guilt, shame, or division, it may not be wise. The Bible remains silent on many modern-day issues, including specific sexual practices like oral sex. This lack of explicit guidance raises important questions for Christians who strive to live according to biblical principles. Without clear, direct references or instructions, followers of Christ must exercise discernment and caution when interpreting biblical teachings. One of the key principles in doing so is avoiding the hasty labeling of any practice as sinful unless there is unambiguous evidence from Scripture. One of the core tenets of Christian belief is that Scripture serves as the ultimate authority in matters of faith and conduct. When followers of Christ add prohibitions not found in the Bible, they risk sliding into legalism. Legalism detracts from the grace and freedom offered through faith in Jesus Christ, and it imposes unnecessary burdens on believers. Historically, legalism has led to rigid and often joyless expressions of faith, where the focus is more on following rules than on cultivating a genuine relationship with God. On the other hand, declaring a practice permissible when the Bible condemns it also presents significant risks it undermines the integrity and authority of Scripture, which serves as the moral compass for believers. 
It's crucial to strike a balance, ensuring that neither personal preferences nor cultural trends dilute biblical teachings. The absence of explicit biblical references to oral sex means that Christians cannot definitively categorize it as sinful or virtuous. The Bible does not address oral sex directly, so the decision regarding its appropriateness is largely left to individual conscience, personal discernment, and prayer. Since the Bible remains silent on this matter, some may conclude that it is a non-issue, while others might feel uncertain or uncomfortable. However, there is room for guidance through broader biblical principles. Passages that emphasize love, respect, mutual consent, and the sanctity of marriage can provide useful insight. Therefore, while the Bible does not directly address oral sex, the principles of marital intimacy found in Scripture, especially mutual respect and the honoring of one's spouse, should guide any decision. One of the overarching biblical principles regarding marriage is the importance of mutual respect and love between spouses. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This passage encourages the sacrificial and selfless love that should characterize a Christian marriage. In light of this, any sexual activity, including oral sex, should be approached with care and mutual respect. Additionally, 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5 speaks to the importance of mutual consent in marital intimacy. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. These verses highlight the idea that sexual intimacy should be a shared experience between spouses, founded on mutual love and agreement. Thus, if both partners are comfortable with and agree to engage in oral sex, there is nothing in the Bible that explicitly forbids it. Conversely, if one spouse feels uncomfortable or convicted that it is inappropriate, their conscience should be respected and no pressure should be applied. There is a widespread misconception among some Christians that certain sexual practices, including oral sex, are unnatural. However, there is no physiological evidence to suggest that oral sex is unnatural for a husband and wife. In fact, the Bible contains passages that celebrate the natural delight and desire shared between spouses, even when those desires might seem unconventional. Proverbs 5.18-19 encourages husbands to rejoice in the wife of your youth and to be intoxicated always in her love. These verses affirm the idea that sexual pleasure within marriage is a gift to be enjoyed. Likewise, Song of Solomon contains numerous descriptions of romantic and physical affection between lovers, celebrating the beauty of marital intimacy. Some theologians like John Piper interpret the poetic and metaphorical language in Song of Solomon as a celebration of all forms of marital love and intimacy, including oral sex. Piper and others emphasize that sexual pleasure is a gift from God to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage. It's also important to consider the health implications of any sexual activity, including oral sex. While it is often perceived as a lower risk alternative to other forms of sexual intercourse, Oral sex can still pose significant health risks, particularly if one or both partners have sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. The human papillomavirus, HPV, for example, is a common STD that has been linked to certain types of mouth and throat cancers. Other STDs, like herpes and gonorrhea, can also be transmitted through oral sex. However, Within the context of a committed monogamous marriage where both partners have been tested and are free of STDs, these risks are significantly minimized. Trust and mutual understanding are crucial in any sexual relationship, and this is particularly true when considering the potential health risks. Open and honest communication between spouses about their health status is essential for fostering a healthy and fulfilling sexual relationship, Kindness and love are foundational to a healthy sexual relationship. Forcing a spouse to engage in any sexual activity against their will is not only unkind, but also unloving. Marriage should be a space where both partners feel safe and respected. Mutual consent is key, 
and if both partners willingly and enthusiastically participate in oral sex, it can be an expression of love and intimacy. However, if one partner feels uncomfortable or morally conflicted about oral sex, their feelings should be respected. Pressuring a spouse to engage in an activity they are not comfortable with can cause harm and violate the principle of mutual respect. Romans 14, 22 to 23 emphasizes the importance of acting according to one's conscience and warns against causing others to stumble in their faith. In Christian teaching, the motivation behind actions is as important as the actions themselves, the desire for oral sex, like all expressions of intimacy, should be rooted in love and a genuine desire to deepen the marital bond. If the motive for engaging in oral sex is selfish or driven by lust, it can lead to exploitation rather than mutual fulfillment. However, when motivated by selflessness, love, and a sincere wish to nurture the relationship, such acts align with godly principles. Christian marriage is meant to be a partnership of mutual respect, love, and care, and all forms of intimacy should reflect these values. In conclusion, while the Bible does not provide explicit guidance on oral sex, Christians can rely on broader biblical principles to navigate this issue. Mutual love, respect, and consent are key factors in any healthy sexual relationship. The absence of clear prohibitions or endorsements leaves room for personal discernment, prayer, and conversation within the context of marriage. As Christians, we are called to honor God in all aspects of life, including in our intimate relationships, always striving to reflect His love and grace.